Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is Miko McHugh for the Weekly Contest 300. Number of increasing paths in a grid. I think this was an easier problem than Q3. Not to say that it is easier, but I'll tell you something. Um, I got a little bit of a hint for this one, and I'll tell you what it is. Um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord, let me know what you think about this problem. So, yeah, so let's... <laughs> my hint is that when I solve this, I'm at 16 minutes, and by then, and you can watch my full contest video, you see it on my screen. By then, I saw that a lot of people solved in two or three minutes, um, so I was like, okay, okay, maybe, you know, let's see if I can, and you know, figure something quick out, right? I mean, people are also very smart, so that doesn't mean that I will get it, but, but you know, that, that was my logic in that, that hint of, okay, maybe just YOLO a little bit. Um, so this one is number of decreasing paths in a grid Q4. So yeah, so the key part about this one is just dynamic programming or memorization is the way that I did it. Um, I think, um, I, I do wonder if there's a good bottoms up implementation. Um, you probably can with some sort of topological sort uh, or maybe just sorting by the largest number or something like this. So I guess that's the top logical sort is if you do it backwards from the highest number, I think you can do it bottoms up. But of course that adds a, a sorting component. But you know that's not a big deal if you have only 10 to the fifth elements anyway. But um <clears throat> but the way that I did it is top down. And the way that I did it, um I think the hardest part about this, especially if you're uh if you are newer to dynamic programming or memorization the, the harder part about this is proving the bounds, right? How do you prove that this is quick enough? And the way that I proved it um, is just that I know I had, I knew that each cell will only be calculated once, and each cell will only look at four direction at most. So that means that we're only going to do over four times n, and four times n is going to be fast enough for most cases, unless your 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 loops are like really expensive and. Okay, but I am getting my ahead of myself a little bit, so let's step back a little bit, right? This code looks cool, it looks tight. What does it mean, right? So the go function just means the number of paths that begins at this current location, um, right? The, of increasing paths or whatever, but, but that's basically what this code does. And here, the, the start of the problem, and of course, we have to remember the mod, so I'm not going to talk about that much. We, we do mods everywhere. Uh, yeah, get, definitely get familiar with yourself with these if you need to. But the kicker, the, the starter is, of course, we go, okay, for every cell, how many paths uh, happen when we start here, right? So that's basically, uh, hopefully, this is uh, you know, self-explanatory. It is what it sounds like. Here, the tricky part is that yeah, so we go, okay, let's say we start, we began here, then now we just add it to the recursion of if the next number is bigger, we go, okay, you add it to, uh, you can think about it more visually as well, meaning what I mean by that is that, you know, with, with, these, comb with these combinatorial numbers, it's sometimes hard to, it's sometimes hard to, uh, kind of figure out what the recursion means, right? And I think that's why, you know, I always like to do visualization. And here, for example, let's say we, uh, let's say this is, I'm going to call it 1A, 1B, just to be more clear. Um, but yeah, but let's say we have 1A, right? Uh, obviously, we cannot go to 1B because it's not strictly increasing. But then now, what, what, what does it mean to go to recursion to 3, right? It means that, and we keep track of the number, but you can also imagine that we keep track of a set, right? A set of distinct, numbers where okay so uh, this is actually not a, a great example because it's just so small but but yeah let, let's say you know now we could recursion to three right and then now we have four so here uh, this is actually just like terrible okay let me just add a few more numbers let's just say we have something like this right so then now what does this mean right so now we start at 1a say and then we go three right that's our recursion what does that mean and then we three goes uh, four and then five and then five six uh, and then also four six actually so that's basically the, the you know I'm skipping a little bit ahead because I wanted to focus on the emphasis here um, so now the, let's say we had three we got all these paths right and this is also why I do total is equal to one because the base case is that this is a one node path 
And then here it's just, you know, if we can concatenate on. And here, what is the three mean, right? So the answer for four is going to be two because you see we have two. So what does the adding mean? The adding means that for each of these these paths, we concatenate them into into three, four, four, and then three, four, six, right? And same thing here for five. When we get to five, it just concatenates them to three, five, three, five, six, and that's why you add it to two, right? And then here you can now get rid of these two, and now you have five things on three. And then now, uh, if three will contain the, the number five, which is the number of these things, and then one A will recursion to three, and then it adds five, because now what it does is it just adds one to the beginning of each of these. And that's basically the idea behind this problem, it is just, um, you know, recursively uh, generate the, in my case, the suffix of what's going on, depending on the number of paths. And, and I think the... The hard part, there are a couple of hard parts. One is, the, like I said, the analysis to make sure that, you know, the brute force isn't um, too ridiculous. But also the total is equal to one, allow you to have this like prefix, almost like a, a prefix array, or not prefix array, but like a sub array type thing where, you know, you, um, you know, there's these problems where, they, okay, this is two dimensional, right? But then now you're trying to add one number. Let's say you have one dimension and you just add one numbers to the left. Well, you know, so every possible uh, suffix for that, you add one to all those stuff. So that's kind of the idea behind this problem. Like I said, this is going to be linear time and linear space because each cell, this, this, this function gets called, uh, okay, let's go over it. R can be O to R, uh, X can be O to, to R, Y could be O to C, and therefore number of inputs is O of R times C. And time per input is O of 1 because this is just four recursions, right? So therefore, total time is O of R times C. Um, you could do the same thing for space where instead of time per input is space per input. So space is also R times C, which is linear in the size of the input. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for this one. So let me know what you think, and you could watch me solve a live learning contest now. Okay. That, that's the one time the Yolo worked, but it seems like a lot of people got in this one, so yeah. Mod again, mod, 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 mod. Uh, silly mistake on Q2, it's going to be expensive. Wow, a lot of people got in this one quickly. Okay. Yeah, this one it seems easier though. Maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> don't get cocky. Increasing, strictly increasing. Uh, 
Oh, that's not good. Hmm. Oh, whoops. I should mend that, but. Eight and three. That silly mistake on Q2 really bite me, though. Would have been a good contest if it went for that silly, silly mistake on Q2. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think. I'll see you later. Stay good, stay healthy, and to good mental health. Bye-bye.